Thanks for inviting me here uh, to, uh, to the Metal Slab. Uh, it's uh, really nice to, uh, to see everything. Um, so the Metal Slab is uh, where the, the Meta test and certification is being done. And uh, to, to put a little bit into perspective, um, the COSC uh, test is something that the entire watch industry has adopted for, for many decades. That's correct, um, yes. There are a few other uh, testing procedures as well, which are done on uh, very low volume uh, mm -hmm. productions. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, uh, a few years ago, Omega, Omega decided to start with, uh, together with METAS, to uh, create a new mm -hmm. testing procedure right. and uh, certification. Why was that done? Actually, we decided to do that because uh, we have seen that our movements are, are performing better than just the COSC, mm -hmm. let's, let's put it this way. Uh, just the chronometer certification, we wanted to have a, something higher than the, uh, the chronometer certification. And then, of course, we have also developed our um, anti-magnetic movement. Uh, and based on that, we wanted to have a certification which is going to be a new standard in the watch industry, especially for Switzerland, that we have that combination with a certification with the anti-magnetic tests uh, combined. And that's why we, we were looking forward to, to have a new solution officially certified, because for us it was important that we have industrialization. And the last thing that is very, very important for us, and not only for us, for our customers, that we have a certification of the finished watch as you as a customer will wear the watch so that's the basic actually for that certification where we have uh, chosen Metas as a partner developing that uh, that certification but which is now today open for everybody so it's not a certification for Omega it's a new standard in the industry uh, higher than the COSC additional tests that we are doing here in this lab uh, with all the machines that we have developed to have that uh, a, a tremendous uh, increase of standard for the certification. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the, f the first steps in the METAS uh, testing procedure? The so the, the first is that we have to rewind the, now the movement, you know, you see these rewinding machines behind, yes. that is a simulation of your arm, actually when you're wearing your watch, mm -hmm. it takes about two hours to rewind the movement completely, and uh, depends also on the caliber, and then we put it on, on the, in the magnetic field and to see whether it stops or not during these tests. So we take uh, a microphone and with the microphone we take the tic-tac of the watch mm -hmm. and we count the cycles that we can count on the, inside the magnetic field and based on that we can say well that's the first of the eight tests in the meta certification that the movement in two positions is not stopped. After the magnet test it goes to the next step. Yeah. What is that? So the next step actually we take the movement and we put in a stock first. So we have a certain stock of movements mm -hmm. certified and then we do the assemble. So assembly, uh, the T2 assembly. So the, actually the assemble of the watch head. So that we take, we take the movement, we put on the dial, the hands, and then we do the assembly and the casing. Mm -hmm. And if everything goes fine, then the finished watch heads will arrive here on this floor for the master chronometer certification. So the first cycle then again is that we have to rewind the watch. So we are doing again a simulation but now with the watch head completely finished as the customer will buy it. Mm -hmm. And uh, afterwards we have uh, a test doing a simulation or we're trying to, to have a simulation like a customer is using his watch. So if you are wearing your watch today. Mm -hmm. um, you have a temperature inside the watch, we, we measured that, of 33 degrees. So when you are wearing during the day, it's 33 degrees. If you take it off during the night, uh, when you're sleeping, you take it off, it's 23 of the environment of the, of the living room, for example. And that's what we are doing, is a simulation, and we do it with our robotic system that we have developed, especially for that, mm -hmm. that we are turning the watch head uh, every three hours in another position to do the simulation as you as a user. So you see it here on the, on the left side. 
So you see here uh, these black boxes that we have and inside are 10 more chats and you see here they are in a horizontal position and behind they are in a vertical position. And this robotic system uh, is programmed so that every three hours uh, it's turned to another position. In that side here we have 23 degrees mm -hmm. and you see also now it's moving. Uh, behind is a second machine similar to that one mm -hmm. where we have the 33 degrees. So 24 hours the pieces stays inside and then we do the measurement of the precision. We take a picture uh, at uh, zero hours mm -hmm. uh, before we put it in the, in the robotic system and 24 hours later we take another picture of the position of the hands and we compare it with the official time, atomic time of METAS. We have an antenna here on the roof of our building where we have the direct link to their atomic watch mm -hmm. so that when we take a picture we know exactly what is the, the difference 24 hours later between the two pictures that we have taken. Well, before we're going further to, uh, to the different steps, we're just in front of uh, the METAS uh, yeah. room inside mm -hmm. uh, of, the, uh, of the, the, this hall. Um, there are people from Metas here actually testing yeah, right. uh, your watches as well. So it's not only being done uh, by the machines uh, and by people from Omega, but people from Metas are here for uh, extra checks. Yeah, actually for us it was important. We said, well, trust is fine, but uh, control is better. Mm -hmm. So as we have here finished watches, we cannot take the responsibility to give that to somebody in that uh, industrial environment. If you have a scratch afterwards, a test uh, is not similar to the cost. You have a callot, mm -hmm. uh, which is well protected. There's no problem if you give that outside. But here we cannot do that with finished goods. So that's why we decided to, to have METAS here inside our uh, location. So these are really official guys from Bern, uh, mm -hmm. so they are neutral. You see also, as you can see, they have their own desk, they have their own chair. Uh, they don't have any, any uh, Omega branding, of course. They want to stay neutral as a Swiss guy is. Yeah. So, and they are here actually to do three things. So first, they control our uh, quality system. And then, uh, second one, they have access to all our data. So all the measurements that we are doing during the, the day and the night. And the third one is, of course, they have the right to go everywhere and they choose every day several pieces uh, before we can deliver it to, to, to our stock. Uh, they can choose the, uh, the pieces and they will retest the whole procedure that we are doing here, the 280 steps of the, the META certification, they will do with their own equipment. So how many days does uh, the entire testing procedure uh, take? No, actually officially it's 10 days if everything would be perfect, but mm -hmm. today we have about 15 days for uh, test procedures because we are not working 24 hours at, at the moment. Okay. Uh, we are working in two shifts from 6 o'clock in the morning till 8 in the evening and then we have a permanence during the night. So uh, whenever a machine would stop that we can react because we have small time to react, otherwise the whole day is lost. And uh, as I explained before, uh, there are these controls with the cameras and I would like to show you here how we do that. You see here now, uh, the lady is taking a, a reference number and you see now with the camera, it takes a picture at the moment and with the reference number that you have here, the individual one. And now we have the hands and the camera takes the position of the hands and compare it uh, with the UTC time. Yes. So that's basically the part that we're doing. So we take a picture, we rewind the, the piece, we take a picture, we put it 24 hours in the uh, stocking system mm -hmm. and 24 hours later we take a second picture and then we have the precision of the day, of the first day of the measurement. And then the second day we, we put it in the, in the magnet field, right? the whole entire watch goes in the magnet field and then again 24 hours in the, in the stocking system and then we take another picture so we have the second day where we have a completely magnetized watch mm -hmm. and the precision of that day the third day we do the same again and now we take a coil to take off every magnetism in the watch mm -hmm. to neutralize the whole watch again mm -hmm. that's the third day and we take it again a picture 24 hours in the different positions and uh, another picture, so we have the third day with the third measurement, mm -hmm. completely neutralized, new watch. And then, of course, we have the fourth day, and maybe I've seen in the robotic system, it's turning only in, in, in four positions. 
and uh, the cost today is five positions but mm -hmm. actually this position is never used you know the sixth position no. because nobody's walking like this you know you aren't no <laughs> so since since the, I do from time to time, you know. <laughs> but actually, the the meta said also, if you have to do it, you have to do it completely. So also, this position has mm -hmm. to be certified. So that's why we are turning actually in the boxes, then the watch at 90 degrees, mm -hmm. and we put it on the fourth day again into the robotic system, 24 hours again, camera before and after, and then we have four measurements. You no, know, neutralized after the casing, mm -hmm. completely magnetized demagnetized and position five and six and that gives four measurements okay. and then we take the, the, the average of the four measurements for actually the, the precision of the watch uh, for the meta certification. Well we're here in front of uh, one of the big magnets that's being used for testing. Right? How strong is it actually because 15,000 gauss is a nice number but for the rest it doesn't say anything to me. Yeah it's very strong I can guarantee you it's about 300 magnets of that size inside, mm -hmm. uh, which are directed to the to, to the middle, where we have uh, only 70 to 70 millimeters of the size, the tunnel, mm -hmm. and just in the middle we have the 15,000 cups. Okay. And to give you an idea, it's about 1.5 tons, the whole thing. Wow. And you see the table is actually uh, fixed against the wall because it's too heavy for the floor here. My goodness. And um, as you see also here we have slides uh, to give you an idea about the force you have about 11 slides uh, mm -hmm. um, in, inside are these, these magnets, these 300 magnets and um, when we did the assembly actually we have assembled five or six of them which slide has 150 kilo approximately mm -hmm. and then we had it together and when we put the, the seventh slide on it we had a distance of about 30 centimeters, 20, 30 centimeters, where it stops. And then you could uh, move it uh, like this because I it's mean, a magnet. It's a plate of 150 kilo, kilo, and it just stops because of, yeah, the of the other magnet, which is uh, the opposite of the, of the polarization. And uh, you could move it like this. That's the new, my new chair, I said, for the future, <laughs> but it's too heavy for my, for my, <laughs> my office. So actually, then we had to put it together uh, with two tons mm -hmm. and you see also two the screws of pressure, of pressure to put it together okay. and you see also the screws uh, inside which are uh, combining then that and that's also the development that we did in Switzerland with a startup in, in uh, Yverdon mm -hmm. uh, which are dedicated at CCS and uh, were dedicated to do this that's the first one N nobody ever did it and mm -hmm. it's uh, also for the environment completely doesn't consume any any energy. You, know. you do test from zero to plus five yeah. uh, for the mass chronometers. So actually that's the average of the four days. Gives mm -hmm. after runs the tolerance is as you said zero to plus five seconds. Uh, it's half of the cost. The cost for a standard caliber is minus four plus six seconds mm -hmm. a day. The, the precision during the f f uh, 15 days and for us it was very important that we can cut that in half. You know, Today's industrialization of the uh, manufacturing of the movement, it's possible to do that. So the actual advantages for, uh, for the end consumers is they got a, a watch that has been tested uh, from the outside, from the inside on accuracy uh, and uh, they get a certification for that and they can check that afterwards as well. So that's one part that was the, the part. There is another one, this power reserve. Well, so also we are also checking the power reserve. Okay. So if we guarantee 60 hours, we take another picture of 60 hours after the rewinding mm -hmm. to guarantee that it's still running. <coughs> it's not only that we say a plus minus 5%, uh, mm -hmm. it's each individual piece is, is tested. And then we have a third test which take another two days <coughs> where we check first the uh, acronism of the watch, so in different position with an uh, acoustic system. So you see the, the machine behind you there with mm -hmm. the <coughs> uh, with the Wichi uh, chronomeroscope. We can take the tic-tac of the watch in different positions. Mm -hmm. That takes about three minutes. And we check there what is the difference between the different positions. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the last one is actually uh, in the precision of the watch. Also after 60 hours, if you have a 60-hour power reserve, after 40 hours, nearly 
discharged. Yes. We do another test like this to compare it. So you have and it fully wound and you have it nearly one third uh, yeah. remaining. So that means power. if you take it off Friday and you take it back on, on Sunday, you don't have to do an adjustment of your of your watch because Good. it's still running in the yeah. tolerances given by me. And so you, you and is there a specific uh, deviation that uh, is allowed between fully wound and uh, say yeah? Also, there's a deviation. It's about eight seconds. Uh, is uh, the definition um, of these two the, um, tolerances? Okay. You know. So now we're in a, in a different mm -hmm. laboratory. This is where the last test is being performed. Right. Waterproof the water, test. the waterproof test. Yeah. How is that done? So actually you see here we have uh, several um, barrels and you see they are pretty massive here so we can go up to 1500 meters so it's a simula simulation of the pressure uh, on the water of 1500 meters. Mm -hmm. We put it in about two hours with the pressure uh, defined and also for diving watches of course we have to fulfill the requirements of a diver watch. That's why we have for uh, the new plop, um, Planet Ocean for example which is 600 meters we are more than 800 meters that we are testing. Actually. And if the water was entering into, uh, was entering into the, um, the watch um, we put a drop of cold water, about 20 degrees, on the glass mm -hmm. and then you have a condensation inside uh, the watch. When it passes this test, the watch will be officially certified? No, first we have okay. to still yes. to have to do the, the visual aspects. Huh? Mm -hmm. So once again a check whether the crown is really uh, well uh, screwed, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a visual inspect whether there is no scratch. You can imagine 280 steps. Uh, it's possible that somebody has done uh, wrong manipulation and you have a scratch or something like this. Mm -hmm. Then you have to do a, a polish or you have to start from zero. So if during the, all the steps there is something not running perfectly and we, you know, we don't have to, to say it's 100% here, we have a certain percentage where we will not succeed to have a certification. So we have to take it off and we have to replace the movement, for example. So that's also a part of the, of the certification, of course. And if everything goes fine, we want to deliver it. As I said before, Metas has the right to recheck the yes. 280 steps, if they like. But they will only check the watches that are fully uh, fully certified. Fully certified, yeah. yes. And then there's uh, the end consumer, the, the client who will buy uh, an Omega uh, that has been tested, comes with a, with a red certification card That's right. uh, with a number on it and he can test, he can look up uh, data uh, that have been uh, uh, registered during the test. Uh, you can look that up. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of information does the, the end consumer get? So the, actually the end consumer has with, with the card, he has an access code with his individual number mm -hmm. and he has then the eight criteria, the official eight criteria of the Meta certification um, are shown uh, afterwards on our homepage. So he can access to my Omega mm -hmm. uh, page and then with the access code he see the individual results of his watch. We're here with uh, the very first uh, mm -hmm. a Globemaster uh, Correctional Master Chronometer. Um, it was a very good reason for Omega to, uh, to start uh, developing a watch uh, that could resist huge amounts of uh, magnetic fields or uh, radiation. Mm -hmm. um, why was that in the first place? In the first place, originally there was about 2008, uh, we had a, a doctor in Germany. Who, asked, uh, who was working in an MRI system, you know, with clients yes. and taking the, 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 scans. the scans from the head or something like this. And he said, I want to wear my watch, but I cannot do it. And mm -hmm. that was actually the basic where we defined also the 15,000 cows, because that was the, the, the force of this first MRI system uh, for the scanning. And then we developed that and of course we have also complaints in the customer service area that uh, the watches are not running anymore after a certain time mm -hmm. uh, as precisely as the, uh, at the beginning because you are catching uh, magnetic fields all over the, the world, let's put it this way. Yes, So uh, the amount of, of magnets in our daily lives has grown exponentially. Uh, extremely, yeah. Extremely. Uh, just think of uh, all the magnets in, in bags or in uh, chargers of, uh, of a lab 
laptops mm -hmm. and, uh, and cell phones. Yeah, right. Uh, but I can imagine there are many, many, many more. Yeah, also in the kitchen, for example, if you have a modern kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. there is a in, in duck, in, in, oh, the induction in, uh, induction uh, yeah. uh, cooking fields. You have there a huge field. Uh, and I wasn't aware that's, of that. Yeah, that's something. Or if you go to the airport, uh, mm -hmm. you have all the scanners there. Or, or even a speaker. A speaker for the audio system. A speaker systems. for the audio system has also magnet fields yes. inside. So yeah. Yeah, well, they are all over. And they are you're catching that with the time. And all of a sudden, uh, certain watches they are not running. That's why for us it's very important that we have also these tests magnetized, demagnetized, so mm -hmm. that you as a customer have no, have no problem with that. You know. So what kind of... Uh, parts besides uh, the balance and the balance spring have been replaced? So actually we worked on the axis so that you have axes that are um, running for several years mm -hmm. that they are not uh, uh, used to too, too, too strong. On the other side we have also worked on the Niva shock and also for now for the parts that we have in the chrono, uh, chronometer um, chronograph, for example, it also has to run in the magnetic field. Did it uh, take oh my God, a long time to, uh, to, to research and to develop uh, the different kind of alloys and materials mm -hmm. that are now being used? Uh, we started 2008 and we, we launched the first one in 2013, so it's about five years that we, that we um, searched for the solution, but it was already industrialized, so um, mm -hmm. in 2013 we launched the first one, then 14 we had a whole um, Aquaterra line, which was uh, actually mm -hmm. a, a master coaxial, and now uh, last year in October 21st uh, we launched the global master and also the our vision are already uh, with this uh, technology inside mm -hmm. and now this year we have uh, a huge uh, collection of the planet ocean that we are launching now and other models that will come uh, end of this year is it the planning that all mechanical movements will be uh, made completely a magnetic that's our plan. So it's a it's a time frame of about five years. Mm -hmm. We are uh, we cannot change everything in, in the same uh, year. But uh, in about five years, uh, the whole collection should be uh, master chronometer. Maybe exception the moon uh, watch, uh, which is a, a history part of our uh, history uh, or a huge part of our history. But uh, we will see what what will come. Okay, time will say. Very curious to see the future. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, my pleasure.